The man's name is Tom Hartman, and he brings up a fantastic point. Billionaires supporting anti-woke policies and anti-woke candidates makes no sense unless you're familiar with how the rich and powerful, with how the aristocracy has historically gotten away with treating people terribly. Fortunately, the man has, a, has an eye for history, and uh, he tells us a little about it. Let's go. Let's check him out. Do billionaires really give a rat's ass about woke issues? And I think this is a really important question, and I think it's important for Americans to understand this. There's actually a word, or actually it's two words, a phrase to describe what's going on here. And I'll get to that in just a minute, but just, you know, you're going to want to, you're going to want to hear this. We have billionaires funding the Republican Party. I mean, hugely. Without billionaire funding in the GOP, they would, they would shrivel up and, and blow away. And many Americans are wondering why. Why do billionaires believe, for example, or do we really believe, excuse me, for example, that a fossil fuel billionaire gives a rat's ass about whether a high school student in Florida learns that there are gay people in our world? or that African Americans in Tennessee were once enslaved? Why do billionaires care about this? American billionaires, I mean, after all, they live in a very different world than you and me. They don't worry about crime. They live in gated mansions with private security 24-7. They don't need to interact with the riffraff like you and me when they travel. They, they're driven wherever they go in bulletproof limousines or on helicopters and they fly private jets so they don't even have to go through airport security or show their ID. I had lunch with a near billionaire a few years ago. He rented an entire restaurant for an entire day just so four of us could have a quiet lunch while his uh, driver and uh, security detail patrolled the nearby parking lots and empty streets. Uh, dinner at one of the half dozen billionaire friendly restaurants in New York City, yes there are some, typically starts around $800 a person and that doesn't include tips, taxes or drinks. Uh, the price is really doesn't reflect the cost of the food or even the service and the rent, it's to keep out the riffraff. Some of these restaurants in fact that cater to billionaires in New York City, and not just New York City by the way, this is also true of Los Angeles and New York, some of them don't even have names on the door. In fact, one of them in New York, the door is hidden behind a painting inside an office building. I just wanted to chime in to say I despise these people so much. I despise them so much. <laughs> if somebody is living a lifestyle that is uh, utterly un unattainable by their employees... I got a problem with them. It's not to say somebody lives in a in a big house and ha and and buys the fancy steaks instead of the cheap steaks. No, if somebody's doing something where they're buying out a restaurant, the entirety of a restaurant, just so they don't get bothered with the riffraff, uh, they they deserve to be among the riffraff. Uh, and in fact, I would go so far as to say we are all the riffraff, and some of us, some of us, just get the opportunity to stand on the necks of others to get their chin a little higher. And so they choose to do that. They can go to hell. Tom Hartman, please explain to us why it is uh, they also end up supporting laws that attack the rest of us and policies that make us dumber and weaker and more distracted. Real high-end oh, office there's a building. Hint. They have unlisted phone numbers. Their kids don't attend public schools or colleges. Their servants, their masseuses, their nannies, their mistresses, and their chefs often live on the grounds of their estates. When they vacation, they fly private jets to their private yachts that have enough staterooms to accommodate 100 of their closest friends. Just ask Clarence Thomas if you have any curiosity or doubts about that. So why do people like this give a damn about whether a trans girl wants to complete in public high school sports? sports? Their kids don't go to public high schools. Why do they care whether a 10-year-old girl who gets raped by her uncle in Ohio can get an abortion? Why do they fund politicians making loud noises about the horrors of white, white children learning that their ancestors enslaved 
African-American people? Why do they care about the rights of those kids' parents to own semi-automatic weapons? None of this stuff in, you know, has any impact whatsoever on the lives of these billionaires. Why do they fund it? Why would any morbidly rich person in America give a damn about these so-called Republican social issues? Similarly, why would American industry favor politicians dedicated to a law in Texas that requires that this be posted in every public elementary school in type large enough to be read anywhere in the class, quote, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass. Do they really want second graders taught about infidelity, gay and straight rape, and bestiality? Now I can tell you why Republicans, why Republicans are told that billionaires do this. Republicans are told that billionaires do this because somehow those belief systems equal the success they've experienced. It's the prosperity gospel. They, they are told that these billionaires support these things because that is how they got all their power and they, and they want America be, to be uh, prosperous in these ways. Of course, that's not the truth. The truth is going to come down to how they make money off of it, as it does with everything they do. How they make money off of supporting these things. Or, I am the Lord thy God, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Do they really want school children taught about the thousands of people in the Bible who were slaughtered by God or at God's direction? Do wealthy businessmen who rarely even go to church fund politicians who demand these commandments? I mean, why? Actually, it turns out there's a very rational, albeit cynical, answer. American billionaires and the corporations that make them rich share a couple of big concerns that are well served by Republicans' ongoing culture wars and their embrace of fascist behavior and ideology. In fact, there's an entire field of academic scholarship dedicated to examining this di dynamic. It's called diversionary warfare. When Henry V took the uh, British throne in 1415, uh, many of the country's noblemen didn't recognize him because his father, uh, Henry IV, had usurped the throne from its rightful holder, Richard II. So Henry quickly declared war on France, and within months he had succeeded at the, ballot, at the Battle of Agincourt, and uh, the country rallied around him. In April of 1982, Margaret Thatcher was facing a crisis of confidence after gutting the nation's social safety net and privatizing the railroads and things. So what did she do? She had a, an unemployment was at a record high. She, her numbers were in the, in the total tank. So what did she do? She declared war against Argentina around the Falklands. 255 British troops died, only three Argentinians. But hey, they won the war. On October 23rd, 1983, terrorists blew up a Marine barracks in Lebanon, killing 241 Americans and making Ronald Reagan, whose response was to cut and run, he pulled all our troops out, look like a coward and impotent. So taking a clue, cue from Thra Thatcher, two days later, Reagan bombed and invaded the tiny Caribbean island of Grenada, saying he was going to save 800 medical students. I'll do you one better. In uh, 2000, George W. Bush was barely elected president. In fact, we now know that he was not. The American people chose Al Gore. In 2000, it came down to Florida, of which the governor at the time was George W. Bush's brother, Jeb. Uh, <clears throat> he ended up uh, taking that to the Supreme Court, the, the recount, and, and the decision was essentially... George W. Bush has already said he's president, and it would be awkward now to go back on that. And Al Gore did what was considered at the time the noble thing, which is uh, back out from the fight. 
shy away from it. In the interest of unity. In the interest of unity, we were given the wrong president. Well, how'd that end up going? We ended up going to war a couple years later. An excuse was given in September of 2001. We already knew that uh, George uh, W. Bush had, was gunning for Saddam Hussein. And uh, in, in 2004, George W. Bush was reelected with the popular vote because he was a wartime president. Forcing conflict upon the American people is how the GOP sustains itself. They're like a bunch of vampires. They got to bleed us to survive. After that, his, his popularity numbers shot up. He had been below both Walter Nemondale and John Glenn, his two most likely uh, can, uh, opposition candidates in the, in the 1984 election. He had been way behind them. But after his war in Grenada, boom, his numbers went right up and he won the, 2000, or the 1984 election. Most recently in 2001, George W. Bush, nobody, nobody thought he was a legitimate president. His brother knocked 90,000 African Americans off the voting rolls in Florida, and he only won by 537 votes. I should have given the man credit. Of course he goes over this. So what does he do? 9-11 provides him with an opportunity to attack Iraq and Afghanistan, become a wartime president, even though Iraq and Afghanistan had nothing to do with 9-11. It was plotted in Germany and Florida, and it was run out of New York and, uh, and, and, uh, and Boston. But hey, it got him reelected. So this is what's going on. These, these Republicans are funding the culture wars to keep Republicans in power, because Republicans are gonna give them what they want. I mean, this is, this is an old song, right? This, this goes on a lot for a long, long way back. So now we stand on a precipice. Are we going to continue to allow global warming to, uh, global warming to kill our people? Are we going to continue to let our teachers be intimidated by Nazis? Are we going to perpetuate the slaughter of our children from the highest gun ownership rates in the country? Are we going to keep young people chained to student debt? Are we going to let corporations continue to block workers from forming unions? Are we going to force American women? And, and so on and so forth. Basically everything. Everything Republicans stand for is designed to either directly bleed the American people to give uh, the money, the profits of that, to the rich, or it's designed to get the American people to fight each other. It's why we have the rule in chat that you got to stick to uh, one thing at a time if you're debating something, and you got to debate one person at a time if you're debating something. Because it's the technique of the right to gish gavel, excuse me, gish gallop. Uh, it's it's the it's the technique of the right to ramble on and on and on about nonsense. Because they don't actually have anything worth a damn to say. All they have is complaints. All they have is is grievances with this group or that group, and by and large. Those have been uh, force-fed to them through Fox, through Steven Crowder, through uh, the, all, all the nonsense right-wing talking heads that you hear. And those are funded by billionaires. Remember, every accusation is a confession. What is the right-wing spiel, the conspiracy theory nutters? What do they say? Oh, a secretive group of billionaires, of globalists, we all know what that means. Controlling everything, controlling what you hear. Gay frogs! <laughs> the confession. Steven Crowder got his start by getting a big check from a billionaire. Same with Ben Shapiro. Same with Fox. Same with all of them. They need us fighting each other in order to get away with robbing us. We're so distracted with this, this tussle that they, they reach into our pockets and take money out of our wallets. They get us agreeing, at least enough of us, agreeing to give up our rights 
to to accept bad deals, to work an infinite amount of hours for peanuts, to kill ourselves slowly but certainly for our masters, for our betters, to profit. And the entire time, by the way, right-wingers, the entire time they're profiting off of you falling for their crap, they're laughing at you. Nobody has a lower opinion of you than the people who profit from your foolishness. Now, your reaction to that could be to get angry at your equals, who are calling you foolish. We're calling you foolish because you're hurting yourself and you're hurting the rest of us. And because we believe there is a point in bringing this to your attention. We believe you're capable of better. Billionaires don't. Billionaires think, right-wing voters, that no matter what, you will fall for their grift. You will keep them in power. You will keep their boots firmly on your neck. That's what they believe, right-wingers. Are they right? Are they correct? I wonder. I'll tell you this. If you're not a right-winger, I got great news for you. More and more people are waking up to this reality. You can help them. Tell them about this technique. Tell them about how the billionaires are turning us against each other so that they can keep unjustly being billionaires. Well, you and I stay nice and poor. Tell them about that. Remember, you're going to have an inherent advantage over everybody that, that uh, jumps to disagree with you. Your advantage continues to be that you're correct. 